that you haven't seen before. And so AKG is going to kick it away. He's going to be in the green uniforms. And Ice will be in the all-white. And he'll take it right here with Franco Harris. And that's where we'll start. No need to set any things up. Here we go. We're very used to the bunch look against the nickel normal here. It's been the meta for this tournament. It's been the meta for this year. And it's going to take one of these competitors that much closer to their first belt. Well, I'm telling you, it's, it's going to come down to the intangibles. Turnovers, maybe the Madden God shine upon you a time or two. You're going to need some of that as Vic is close to the marker there. And I thought so. He's just shy, slid down that football way behind him, and they're going to mark it at the 45. That's right. And just like the NFL, to uh, keep the, the fairness, if we're going to keep the quarterback safe, we've got to spot that ball where that slide first started, not where it ends. So third and a half yard still goes to the air. Franco will pick up the first down. And even in just the first two passes, love that he's just hitting the flats, hitting the flats. That's the one thing that AKG left open all game last game, whether if it was a short flat there or an across the field flat on a crossing route. So first and 10 now, new set of downs here for Ice. We're here in the final. Thick, boy, that's a tight window. It looked awfully scary coming off the, the hand of Vic there. Oh, watch, he sneaks this one in the window. He probably could have got Brahman on a football and got him in there. That's how you sneak a football in a window, triple coverage. Ice, boy, that's a huge overthrow. That's what you get with Michael Vick sometimes. He's going to sell one. And that's 128 cap, Michael Vick. A little over 10% of his cap going strictly to his quarterback. Has both conductor and gunslinger for abilities. Gets it out quickly to Franco Harris. Wouldn't call that the immaculate reception, but it's worth five. 2 third downs already. He's converted on both of them. See as he pick up another. Boy, he's moving quickly here, though. Not a lot of standing around at the line. Not a lot of hot routes. And it's going to be close to the marker. And AKG wanted to throw the hitch route. Wanted to throw the hitch route. And a good job by Ice of, of showing. like He knew he was baiting it, and he couldn't throw it. So he took the four and a half. And he's going to kick it. He's going to take the three here. Needed an inch. I like that. Your first possession of the game, you always want to get points on the board. Every single time, whether it's three, whether it's seven, you have to score on that first possession, especially in the position that AKG is in, trying to come back from the same loss oh last boy. season. Uh-oh. And Dion, this is not what you want if you're AKG. You're going to start at your own 10-yard line. Gave him a free fumble animation there, too. Great strip there. You get a little scary anytime you're running the ball, and you see, you see that defender just fighting a little bit more. Almost looks like he's starting a lawnmower trying to get that ball away from you. So he's got 90 yards to go on his opening possession here, trailing by a field goal. See the reaction there. He wasn't too concerned about it. That's the thing you'll notice about a lot of these top competitive Madden players. Not much really gets to them. I mean, there's a moments where they know, oh man, that was heartbreaking. Uh, but this early in the game, you're not gonna, you're not gonna see that. You've got to keep your emotions in check as much as possible. You never want to beat yourself. You always want to make sure you make your competitor beat you. Press coverage on the outside. Vic, nowhere to go, and he'll lose four yards. There's Curse getting in there. New Orleans offense playbook here against the Detroit defensive book. 3-3-5 three, three, odd is what you will mostly see out of uh, don't care about ice here. Vic. Just standing in his own end zone. That's not where you want to stand, but there's Tyreek Hill. Out to the 33. That'll give him some breathing room. Ate a big hit stick there. No harm, no foul, I guess. First down. Yeah, I'm moving up to the one-yard line there. I'm, I'm, I'm not standing in my own end zone. And even, and even so, not even for the safety, then you also have to worry about a hold on one of your linemen. They end up giving you a safety as well. And, uh, yeah, we've got a little issue here on first and 10 at the 33-yard line. So uh, that's where they're sitting right now. They'll have to reset everything back up. Um, 
just one of those things. It, it happens. I, I, you know, I, I go back to, I'd rather see it early <laughs> than late. Well, a quick job by our admins to be able to rectify the situation. Easy breezy, lemon squeezy, and we're here in the final between AKG and Ice. It's 3 nothing right now. AKG's got the ball for the first time. He's got the ball at the 33-yard line and trying to see if he can put a drive together, maybe take an early lead in this one. Once again, Scott Cole, big grocery along with you. And that man right there is trying to see what he can do against Heist. They both had easy roads, slight work in the semifinal, but something tells me this final is going to be much more difficult here on first and 10. And the first play for AKG will take it to the 36. Marcus Allen with the carry. And you see again there, Marcus Allen in the backfield. He's taking advantage of the fullback wing package to put Todd Gurley at basically an H-back position there, playing tight end for him. You see him on the left side of your screen there. Always going to have a speed matchup. Always going to have the speed advantage on whatever linebacker or safety is over the top of him. So second and seven now, Vic. Once again, AKG in the green uniforms. And that's going to be a pick. You got baited, my friend. Tyreek came too far down that time to try to get it. Ends up getting a Superman animation with his corner there. Picked off, chance to go up two scores. And yeah, just sitting there in a cloud flat, it looked like. And he swung it out there, and Superman was probably right. Now, that's a huge turnover we talked about, though. Those are the intangibles. And we look at it on paper, both these guys pretty even. Going to come down to turnovers. Maybe time of possession is going to factor in, too. Look at this again. And you'll see Reek has him beat by about 10 yards downfield, but has to come back to the football and just comes back too far eventually and ends up giving the corner a chance to make a play. I think maybe without a pass lead or even a pass lead up there, he doesn't have to come down this field as much. Yeah, that felt like just a normal B button. Yeah, he just threw that ball it. and didn't have anything on it. With a pass lead there, your, your wide receiver stays back so he doesn't give the D-back a chance to make that play. Well, a costly turnover, and Ice is already on the move. He's in the red zone here, first and ten. Vic again. He's got to be careful where he throws it. Now, Ice is doing exactly what AKG gave up his first game, and that's he's going to blitz one side every time. You have to throw at the side the blitz is coming from, whether it's a flat route, whether it's a table route, whether it's a hitch route. Go directly at the side of the blitz. There's not going to be as many people on that side of the field to tackle you. You can maybe make one miss and turn it into six. So that'll bring up a third and six now. If he holds him here, I mean, no harm done. There's the crossing route back in the end zone, and it's picked off. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. He gives Why one away and takes there? it right back. Why do you come out there? Let's see. Play AKG. And I, did, did his momentum, was it a camera switch to me? I think maybe, maybe the camera, camera switch. Yeah. I don't know. He, he plants and moves up. I guess at that point, you're just being taken out of the end zone. You gotta, you can't mess around with it. Low throw. And so both his drives first started at the 10 yard line. Remember the awkward kickoff? Mm -hmm. And now his second drive starts at the two. But he'll take not giving up points there. Most definitely. And a great low pass mechanic usage there. You tend to throw the low pass, and the defenders won't have the chance to get those interceptions. He just saw a tip pick of his own. Doesn't want to see one happen to him. I like the usage of the low throw. So that'll bring up the second quarter in this one. We're in the final here for the Jets Club Championship. And it's going to be second and three at the 10-yard line for AKG. Been an incredible day, though, so far. And it looks like he's in this New Orleans book just because it gives him so many different formations where he can sub Gurley in at tight end. One of the few books that gives you multiple looks to put a halfback in at tight end there. And he's taking advantage of it. So Marcus Allen will move the chains. First and 10 at the 15. After the interception in the end zone, he threw one of his own and it somehow kept ice out of the end zone. Vic. 
Swings it to the outside. Allen does a good job saying it bounds. And it'll be a new set of downs at the 26 yard line. Just took the table out there. Only route he had, maybe an unnecessary spin there. Spun himself back into the defender. Could have just kept that going up the sideline and maybe made a couple Lawrence Maroney stiff arms. Been a long time since I heard of that reference. It's definitely one of the greatest stiff arms of all time. Boy, we we're back to back D sinks here, so I have an opportunity here to let the super admin step in again and, and try to reset th things up. Back once again, and we got 419 left in the second quarter. Still a 3-0 game. Uh, still AKG's first, first look at this thing. Uh, he's, we've had some turnovers, a little bit of back and forth. And remember, these guys last year played to a 10-6 ball game uh, where Don't Care About Ice came out with a win, ended up winning the whole thing. He's your reigning New York Jets club champion. And he's trying to repeat, but AKG's in his way. And he's got the ball at the 26-yard line, and here we go. First and 10 once again. Remember, this drive started his own two-yard line after he intercepted in the end zone and a good gain out to the 40. Good spin there to make that defender miss. Would have been a gain of maybe nine, give him second and short. Instead, he picks up the first down. Still plenty of time to go in this game. Both of our competitors had huge semifinals. I mentioned slight work. Different story here in the final, though. Two Titans of Madden going at it, and there's a good hit in the backfield. And that'll bring up second and 11. And uh, not, not counting some of the uh, milk the clock runs from AKG in his semifinal match, but this is probably the most we have seen him run the ball in competitive setting in quite a while. That box is full of Jets on the defensive side. Has time, makes a read, and there's Dion to the 43. And now come, here comes an interesting third and six. A little scary throwing past the spy there. Spies tend to uh, get animations that a lot of zones don't. <laughs> that always worries me a little bit. Sneaks one in there. Nothing open downfield. He had to check it down. Eagle, eagle. And now it's eagle, eagle. Eagle, third eagle. down from the 43. Still trying to get in plus territory here. And there is Randy Moss. Makes a man miss. Somehow still on his feet at the 36. Great job of beating the blitz there by putting that wheel route on the outside, isolating that defender, two on one. And if your two includes Randy Moss, you're going to win more often than not. So a new set of downs and plus territory for AKG. Vic. And he'll maybe get three. Remember, we. Had our admin step in and reset up the scenario. So if you're looking at those stats, uh, they say numbers don't lie. Well, those those aren't those aren't real. There's just a little asterisk at the end of that. <laughs> That's right. Check the footnotes. Two minute warning. So a three nothing ball game. And we've seen both of our players be maybe not conservative by choice, but just trying to make smart plays. Yeah, in this big of a game, you are not going to want to press your luck this early. Vic, looking downfield, Randy Moss, touchdown AKG, swag on him. Good dive there as well. Not the standard animation you're used to seeing on that th pass. Dove at it, keeps the ball open. You're just not used to seeing this kind of dive. I'm not sure if a user clicked on it. Yeah, that's a user dive yeah. right there. That's exactly what that was. That was nice. A user possession catch in the end zone. And it's our first touchdown of the game. And Smartly will fall down at the 31 to avoid maybe getting hit. I think that was Lawrence Taylor or something that was starting to barrel down the field on the kickoff coverage. First time this tournament that ISIS had to play from behind. Let's see, does that change his game plan whatsoever? Remember salary cap mode. That's why you're seeing Michael Vick at the helm. And that'll be a drop. It'll be second and 10. Hits him just in time. Catches him right in the bread basket there. Knocks the ball out. 
Under two minutes to go in the half. Nice trailing by four. To the sideline. So that's a risky throw. Neither player gets an animation there. Derwin didn't want it. The receiver didn't want it. Third and ten instead. Could have been real risky for Ice there. Derwin James was about a half a step away. Well, you got to come up with a play here. It's an aggressive D on the other side. AKG is starting to turn up that pressure. He's sending it from the right side and sending a looper on the left side there. Something you didn't see at all in this semifinal game. You see the outside pressure. You see the inside pressure. That's a new adjustment for us. Let's see, does he run that again? Uh, Randy Moss with a great run after the catch to pick up the first down. Big third down conversion there for Ice. This time he'll go to Franco Harris. And he'll, that'll be good enough for five yards. He'll take that all day long. Exact same look there for AKG. However, that time he sent just his front four of his D-line. He's making everything look exactly the same, which is what you want to do on defense. Each five yards here at the 48. Minute to go here in the second half, and that's going to be thrown into coverage. And it's picked off by Jamal Adams. And he had his underneath receiver open. Excuse me, Derwin James with the interception. You know, we have to give respect to all the Florida sure. State players. Uh, yeah, here we go. You know what we do here. <laughs> now, but he playmaker to receiver underneath there, and I thought that's where he was going. He got a little greedy and we tried to go to the wide receiver instead of the tight end, and that's what let AKG make that play. Marcus Allen. And this is, boy, this is going to be an interesting last 52 seconds and of the half. See, Look at this again. You see exactly what I mean. He'll playmaker this receiver right above the shield, but instead of throwing to him, he throws to the wide receiver, which gives AKG a chance to make a play. The player that he had playmaker was wide open, and I'm not sure if that was a mispress or if he saw something that we didn't. Oh, Randy Moss to the cribbo. AKG in control. And they're going to talk it up. You remember, don't care about ice, pointed at AKG and said, you're next. That's right. He hit him with the Goldberg. 14 to 3. And this is this is easy work here. Glitter, glisten, floss, gloss. You put moss on a streak right there, and you're not gonna catch him. We'll see if we can take a look at that touchdown here in a moment, but don't want to miss the kickoff. I, guess, I tell you, in Mad 19, <laughs> anything can happen. And listen, here it is again. Just moss on a wheel route. No one's there to stop him. Missed hit stick there. He got a little greedy. Instead of trying to tackle, he tried to make a big hit. Maybe knock the ball out, maybe cause a turnover, maybe give up six points. It's going to be one of the three. Yeah, risky play on defense. End up coming back to bite him. And now Ice with two timeouts at the 49. Even three here. You're going to have to remind me. It's, I feel like it's been 87 hours to do this first half. Who got the opening kickoff? Uh, AKG started from the 10 to begin the game. I believe. No, uh, no, that no, was after no. the score. So, yes, so Ice AKG got it, it first. So yep. AKG is going to get it at halftime. It's all coming. It's all coming back to me now. 3 nothing in the squib kick that got him down to the 10, I believe, is exactly how it happened. So it's going to be a second and one. Still going to have one timeout here as we look at it again. A little scramble there by Vic. Has time. Has a timeout, so. AKG only sends it from the right side there. Big bat down at the line. Miles Jack, I believe that was. Going to bring up a third and one. Needs, in my mind, about seven yards. Way outside of field goal range right now with that kicker that he has. Even if he gets seven, it's still going to be tough. He's going to get the new set of downs and get out of bounds. Great play there by the youngster. Saves his timeout, gets himself maybe even into field goal range there. Picked up four. We think he needs about six or seven, so maybe two or three more here. Uh, he's got another chance with Randy. I don't like this alignment against Randy over here. Vic somehow gets through. Does he get? No, you can't throw this to the end zone. You can't do that. And it's, I was waiting. It was still being tipped around there, even the guy laying on the ground. He almost caught it with his ribs. He could have took a deep breath in and he probably would have corralled that ball. Not the smartest throws, nine seconds to go. Mentioned he needs about three or four yards, so he'll go back to that flat route, makes a man miss. 
And he's going to have to use this timeout here with the opportunity to make it a one-score game if he can kick, kick this through. And even if he does get out of bounds after the second spin, he's still not going to have time to get a playoff. I like the fact that he went ahead and tried to make the man miss to get six. That's good usage of the clock there. And it is up, and it is good as the time expires to end the first half. And we're here in the final of the New York Jets Club Championship. The winner will go to San Francisco, represent the club. And putting five grand in your pocket is not a bad thing either. Big shout out to the folks at the New York Jets for having us be a part of it. And they've, they've had some incredible competitions over the last few years. Yeah, we saw these two play in one of their competitions last year. Uh, the semis last year don't care about ice and AKG. We get a rematch in the finals this year. And I'm sure if you ask these two competitors, we'll see them again next year. So second and four now. Both competitors okay with, with keeping things short. Both trying not to get beat deep, give up the big play. And anything downfield has been picked off, to be honest with you. Any score for AKG here will put him up two possessions. He has not given up a touchdown. And to be completely honest, the touchdowns he gave up last game weren't in, well, they were in garbage time, let's be honest. He hasn't given up a competitive touchdown this tournament. There's a drop by Dion. That'll bring up third down from the 39. He needs four. He needs to get to about the 48. Excuse me. 44, maybe 43 and a half. Tyreek's got a chance over here. Vic stands in the pocket, just lays it off. A little, little floater, a little touch pass out to Allen. He'll pick up the first down. Pinballing off of defenders there. No one could take him down. A stiff arm, a spin, a juke. Finally gets corralled down by a couple defenders there. So that'll bring up first and 10. Boy, AKG, he knows how big this drive is to open up the half. Good job of clock management as well. Stretch it out to Allen and Nitrate Lane and Amos there on the stop. It looked as if AKG anticipated a strafe by Ice there. Uh, you, you see a lot of people strafe to counter the spin. So to counter the strafe, you don't spin. Both players, uh, <laughs> he kind of threw up rock and rock there. <laughs> I was lucky that Night Train Lane was there to make the initial contact. Second and four. A little bit of motion here from Randy, and he'll stretch it out again. But this time, Ice is all in the backfield. And that's going to force a third and eight. AKG making sure that he snaps this ball with under five seconds on the play clock each time. Starting to get into a little more of a milk the clock offense a little earlier than what I expected. Yeah, I think he's trying to shorten this game. One way to stop a proliferant offense is to keep it off the field. Remember, it was just a 10-6 ball game between these two guys last year. There's a little playmaker, the bullet, and Gurley. Just getting wild with it, and that's going to bring up a fourth and seven. Remember, we saw two epic punts from, and I don't talk about punts a lot, from both of our competitors. Both got it out of the one-yard line, and I think he's in that range where he's like, you know what, I'm just going to go for it. It was a highlight-worthy punt, believe it or not. <laughs> it, was, it was a beaut. I've seen some guys try to put it in the corner. They end up kicking it out of the 26-yard line, so... Got to give props where props are. This is a big fourth down, fourth and seven. Drag not open, so he's going downtown for Moss. Same play, but this time can't haul it in. And that time the user dive <laughs> does not work off. And look at that, thinking is lucky stars. Don't care about ice. That's a big drop right there. That could be a momentum swing. It has that feel to it. Almost a carbon copy of the play that AKG last scored on him. When Sean almost got Ooh. it right back. I do like the play call there on fourth and seven to go ahead and one all of it, though. Yeah, why not? He's got quite a few defenders playing the sticks. Let's just go over the top. Yeah, he had a drag coming across, but that one he got it done and then just went up top. Couldn't haul it in. Second and ten here for Ice. 
And that's a good throw to Dion. Maybe a tad late, but it worked. Now, the thing you start to wonder here, if Ice scores, does he go ahead and chase the two-point conversion now? Does he just take his points? I, I don't. You, I, I, I don't chase him until you need to. And I've always been of the, of the same belief. If it's a, uh, a one-point game and you give up three, you can still win it with a touchdown. If it's a two-point game and they give up three, you can still win it with a touchdown. But if you don't get your two-point conversion, your confidence just isn't there. You feel down on yourself. Yeah, there's nothing worse than being down by nine. That's the worst feeling in the world when it comes to Madden. And there's Michael Vick. And fumbled it for a moment, but it goes out of bounds at the six-yard line. Gets tad greedy there with the spin. Almost cost him. Got Lattimore at safety there, probably trying to go against some of those high passes that you'll see. Second and two from the six-yard line. Ice trying to maybe tie up this game if he decides to go for two, but Khalil Max got other ideas. Untouched off the edge. Franco may have been blocking there and just whiffed completely, it looked like. Just picked up no one. It's pretty ugly on the outside for the legend, Franco Harris. Third and eight. Showing pressure from the left side here. It does not come. He mans him up instead. And this is going to be close to the marker at the six. Great job by AKG to take away the table route there. He's been throwing the table route at the side of the blitz. So this time he gave the exact same look of the blitz, but manned up his linebacker onto that running back. Forced George to take his three. 14-9. It's been a field goal fest for Don't Care About Ice. But he's within a true score now. Get a stop, get a touchdown, and all of a sudden, you haven't played your best offensive game, but you could have the lead. It's not that he hasn't got down there. He's been unable to convert in the red zone. Yeah, when that field shrinks and AKG can make the adjustments and allow these sidelines in the back of the end zone to become his 12th, 13th, and 14th defenders, it gets a lot harder. So first and 10 now from the 35. We're here in the final. Full train along with Big Grocery. It's been our pleasure to be with you throughout the day. We've seen two floods, and now we, we got a struggle fest here. And I mean that in a good way. And hit as he threw. It's going to bring up second and 10. You see a uh, tipped ball there that almost landed to an interception. Wouldn't be surprised to see AKG just run the ball here and get himself to the fourth quarter. Yeah, maybe try to throw those fours up. He's also had some. He's had these little, little flat routes too out to Y, and he just held it for a second too long. Huge sack now. And in third and 19, your playbook is not what it would have been on a third and six or a third and seven. Again, just untouched off the edge. Just no one guarding that. Can't run a play here, so he's got his hands off a of controller. Put your fours up. Put your ham sandwich down. Put your fours up. We're going to have a third and 19 to start the quarter. AKG up by five. But you can't get conservative. He's been a little conservative here in the second half. The, the play calling is a little, a little to my. Like you're playing not to lose instead of playing exactly, to win. Exactly. That's, that's, a, that's a great way to put it. First play of the final quarter. Five minutes left to see who's moving on to San Francisco and representing the Jets. And there's Tyreek Hill. He gets half of it back. And how confident are you in your defense? Are you going for it or are you punting here? If I'm AKG the way I was punting last game, I'm, I'm confident in my punter. He's going for it. That's the respect he's got for ice. He's anticipating the pressure from the right side. He ID'd that cornerback out there. He indeed does come in, and he overthrew it. Maybe could have ran for the first down. Great job of picking up that blitz, though. Just took those couple extra seconds to make sure he ID'd the mic correctly. That's what you get with Michael Vick, though. It's either greatness or move. Ew. Vick will sling it to the outside. Franco Harris will carry two defenders out of bounds. We're going to have a second and short. 
And even if he does score a touchdown, you have to anticipate him going for two regardless to make it a three-score game. A two-point lead does nothing for you. And one-arm grab at the 12-yard line. The momentum's slowly shifting in this ball game. You can feel the pendulum beginning to swing. Of course, don't care about ice, has been down here a few times, but unable to cash in. Bunch to the left. Looking to the end zone and ends up checking it down to Franco Harris. Well, I'm not sure you, you don't go to Franco Harris early there and see if he can maybe truck his way in. Closer and closer you get, the tougher it gets. But Almost. he can get a first down here, Grocery. I think that's big. Second and two. Ricky in the backfield this time. Double tight end. Up under center goes Vic. Hands it off to Ricky, and he's going to be short. Wrong hole there. If he goes to the hole on the left side, he picks up a touchdown. Steady goes to the right side there and puts himself in a third and short. Third and one from the three. Nice trying to quiet the crowd down. They don't know which Jets to root for, and the high ball is a touchdown. Ice is in the lead. When he needs it the most, he finally scores in the red zone, and there we go to go for two to make it a field goal lead. Yeah, 100% agree with this move right here. Base 24. Stop, stop, stop. Got to run your best two-point conversion play right here. 300, 300. He's been trailing all game. He had a 3-0 lead to start it. Then it was all KG, AKG with back-to-back -back touchdowns. And here's the stretch play. Tries to spin it back. Huge stop by AKG. He now has the chance. And let's see the touchdown. I, I, Great snag. I tell you what, Grocery, I, I don't like a run there. I don't like a run on a two-point conversion, period. Not, I, Especially about, when he got Michael Vick. About the only time I'm running that one there is if I uh, maybe catch him in aggressive and get half the yeah. distance to the goal, make it a one-yard play instead of a two-yard play. That's about the biggest difference in football right there. But this is going to give AKG a chance to milk this clock. He knows this is he all only you needs want. a field this goal. This is all you need. All he needs is 30 yards, and he's pretty comfortable. A little touch pass once again, and I, I'm not sure he had possession of that ever. No, it'll be second and 10. Also stops the clock for Ice there, does himself a favor, doesn't have to use a timeout. AKG's got to step it up here. It's been really conservative second half. And that ball just barely gets past the fingertips of two defenders who were coming in at him. Had a chance to bat that back down, and a lot of those batted down passes can become interceptions, and just barely gets that off. Yeah, AKG kind of holding on to the football back there right now. It is, it is coming out and that's a real no, late. That's a no gunslinger, Vic, that's getting that ball off. Scary. Third and five. Vic, nice job recognizing the blitz and picking up the first down and more. Marcus Allen just steps out at the 43. That was such a good flat route. Not the table, not the wheel, just, just a little out route. Just, just keep him in the backfield, just a little swing to the running back there. And we haven't seen that running back on a swing all game. AKG knew that that blitz was coming before Ice called it. He guessed right, and he picks up the first down. Keeps it in bounds here, keeps the play going. He can take it to the two-minute warning. And there's Gurley. Holds and that on will be it. the two-minute warning. So from 41, he basically he needs to pick up this first down to get into field goal range. The eight will get him to the 33, which would make it a 50-yard field goal, um, which even your standard 10-cap Dan Bailey's more often than not, as long as you get, doesn't even have to be perfect, as long as you get to close to max Hey, I'm power. a Bears fan, so I, I, don't count, I don't count any field goals until I see him go through the uprights. I may have an entire municipal county upset at me right now. <laughs> you are correct. Second and eight here from the 41. 
And there's Tyreek Hill. Night Train did everything he could <laughs> to punch that thing out. He tried to get his peanut Tillman on. That's about the only animation you can root for. Good in route there. And that, that's the exact animation you wanted as a defender there. There, there is no other animation if I see a catch that I want if I just gave up that catch. And I love Tyree Kill, but if, if that, that matchup ever happened in real life, that ball's coming out. Night Train's bringing that thing Night out. Night Train's got to be pushing 80. I think Reed can break his hey, tackle. Uh, but Night Train probably wouldn't even gone for the fumble. He probably would have just clotheslined him <laughs> and put him out for the game. Yeah, just punched One him right play, in between bam, the face mask over. there. Over. Well, he's in field goal range. We've got second and 10. At the 28, Ice uses his first time out to stop the clock. Needs a turnover or he needs a sack. It has to be one of the two here. If he wants to represent the New York Jets, he's going to have to have one of those two outcomes in the next few plays. Gets it to Gurley. And Ice will use his second timeout, third and 10 in coming. If you're AKG, you really, you can't take a sack here. And you can't turn it over, obviously. I'm Captain Obvious right here. But a first down would be huge. I didn't stay in a Holiday Inn Express last night, but I do believe he needs to pick up this first down. Well, yeah, smart sliding right there. And there's the final timeout for Ice. So we're going to have a 38-yard field goal. I hope. He, he's in his playbook he's right about now. It. Yeah, he's thinking about it. I wonder if he's worried about a block. Uh, Grossi, we're all worried about a block. I'm not even playing, and I'm worried about a block. I think one He's person going in for this it. is not. He's going to try to win this thing. He doesn't think he can stop Ice coming back the other way. This is the ball game. Watch out for Allen on that table route. He's got it on the opposite side of the blitz. The gusto of this young man here. Is he second-guessing himself here? Play clock's getting pretty low. Has he thought better? I, I think he's trying to draw him off sides. There's nothing there. He thought better of it there. And he's going to take the delay of game. 43-yard field goal compared hey. to a 38. Let me tell you about 43-yard field goals. <laughs> Do we need to have this conversation again? It's not going to be perfect, but it is going to be good. And we got a two-point ball game. It's everything we could have wanted. And I almost wonder if the reason he didn't call that timeout, if you give up a kick return or you give up a, yeah, a bomb you, on you first or second down, three, yeah. you've got your entire plethora of timeouts there. He felt confident with a, the difference between a 38-yard and a 43. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't worried about that. Uh, I believe he does have an 18-cap kicker. Now, if it would have been 48 or 53, yeah, maybe uh, the palms get a little sweatier. <laughs> 63 seconds to go. Ice trailing by two. Who's going to represent the Jets? Who's going to go to San Francisco? AKG sends the right and the left side. And just the footsteps of Sean Taylor there causes the drop. Second and 10. No timeouts for Ice. Dion, I think. That, yeah, he's got Dion at safety and Sean at corner. So it was Dion's footsteps there. I don't think that exists. I don't think that's a thing. And he serves up a dip and he dot to the 39. Gets them both. Do we, do we got a, you got, you got a, who's this kicker? We've, I've only seen him kick 9,000 field goals in this game. Uh, he missed, he missed a 54, Bailey? correct? Yeah, with Bailey. Okay. He missed a 54. So he needs a little more. Ooh, he, he's and he's got it. He's field goal range. It's 50 from 50 here. 50 yarder from there to win it. However, he may not care about ice, but AKG's <laughs> got enough timeouts to put it on him a few times. I'm surprised AKG's not calling a timeout here. Eagle, Eagle. I think he's worried about he's uh, holding. He's it. worried about him kind of running some bluff plays so he can't get yep. iced. Second and four. AKG cannot give up the first down here. And it's gonna be a run to Ricky Williams. I'm already telling you this. And he hands it right off the gun and a nice shot by AKG. And there is a timeout. AKG Ooh, shows the right gap right there. And that was a hit stick to Boom. the mouth. Forget Third and about six. It. Now, does that push him out of field goal range? It's 52 now. Oh, boy. And, and I think he six. felt the same way with the QB sneak. He got scared himself there. It's fourth and five. He can't run any bluff plays. AKG has a timeout out. Show me that you don't care about ice. 
It is a 51-yarder to take the lead. And the kick is up, and it is good. 11 seconds. Tyreek should be back there. Well, you got to be careful not to squib this here. I think you got to go sort of deep. You know what I mean? You can't give him good field position. He needs a good return from Dion. Prime time. Can't get away. Eight seconds in a timeout. He still has over the middle available here. Doesn't have to go to the sidelines. Doesn't have to hit the sideline to stop the clock. You've got to be scared of dual crossers. You've got to be scared of the skinny post with the deep out coming from the other side. Watch Quite the a wheel few route, route combinations the that can wheel still route get him there. To Randy Moss has been there for him. Majority of the game. And let's see if he goes with something quick here. Tries to get two plays out of it. No, he's this is it. He's got Randy. This is it. And Ice is going to pull it out of the last second. And you can see, my man, he is absolutely juiced. Never has there been more of a height disparage between two competitors. It doesn't matter, though, when you get on the sticks. Don't care about Ice is your back-to-back -back New York Jets club champion. Congratulations. I'm here with Don't Care About Ice, our new 2009 Neatine Jets Club Championship. How does it feel? You asked for this and got it. I got really lucky on the play, and I think it was like the beginning of the fourth where he dropped the wide open touchdown. That really brought me back in the game. That was a huge momentum shift, and I probably didn't deserve to win, but I'm thankful to be here, and I won't let, I won't let the Jets down in California. Now, this... This might be the most humblest we've ever seen you. Let's go back to when you pointed after that big win in the semifinals and told him he was next. Were you talking trash for yourself or trying to get in his head? I just wanted to let him know he was next. He's been throwing a little sneak diss all weekend, talking about, oh, I can't wait to do this when I win or do that when I win. But whether you win by an inch or a mile, winning is winning. So. Well, we know you had a great performance and made the name for yourself last year in the club championship. Now moving on to San Francisco, what are you looking to do differently here and trying to get yourself to victory? I want to be more prepared. Last year I went in not really as prepared going into Orlando, and Skimo clearly out-prepared me. And now just I want to represent the AFC East, win the whole thing. Thank you to the Jets. Well, here you go. Here is your ticket, and you are moving on our 2019 Jets champion. Don't care about ice. We're going to go ahead and get it back to...